Hey everyone, Julian here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the Learning Flask series. This is episode four and we're gonna be working with static files. Now what do I mean by static files? I mean JavaScript, CSS and images. So let's jump straight into it. So as always, I do have a text-based version of this guide available at the website. I'll chuck the link in the description below. We've got another tab open with our uh, Flask development server at localhost, which is 127.0.0.1 port 5000. We've got a terminal and we've got VS Code. Now let's jump straight in. Let's make sure our app is up and running. Let's hit Flask run. Head over to our browser tab. I'm gonna close the development tools down there. And there we go. Index is up and running just as we left off in the last episode. So. Static files, how do we work with them? Well, what we're gonna do is uh, create a new directory next to our templates directory called static. But first of all, I wanna get rid of this PyCache directory, it's irritating me. So you can do this in VS Code by just hitting the settings, searching for hide, add a pattern, forward slash, no, no, star star, forward slash, PyCache. Click OK and that should disappear, there we go. Right, I digress. So static files, we need to create our static directory. And by default, that should be located next to our templates directory. So I'm gonna close these down and I'm gonna create a new directory inside our app module, a new folder, and I'm gonna call it static. And that's kind of a default thing that Flask is gonna look for just like we did with templates. Now inside static, I'm gonna create three new directories, CSS, JS, and IMG. Now this is just a pattern that I use. You can obviously call these whatever you want. It's just good practice to uh, sort of pick one and kind of stick to it, just makes your life a lot easier. Now inside CSS, let's go ahead and create a style.css and inside JS, let's go ahead and create a JavaScript file called app.js. Now these are gonna be our kind of global files that we use, but you can make as many as you want. You know, this whole thing that I'm trying to teach you guys is that Flask can be nice and modular and you can separate things out into different files, different directories to keep everything nice and organized. Now in our image directory, uh, let's just go ahead and chuck an image in. I've got this Flask image that I'm gonna drag and drop. And as you can see, it's just the lovely Flask logo. So there we go, we've created our static directory, three subdirectories, CSS, image, and JS, and we've created style.css, app.js, and I'm gonna rename this image here just to Flask. There we go, cool. So how do we work with these files? Well, first up, let's actually add something to style.css. Let's just do something nice and simple, like change the background color, and we're gonna make it a nice subtle off gray. Now, a nice thing with Visual Studio Code, you can just do BC, and it's gonna work out pretty much what you're looking for. In our case, it's background color. Go ahead and click save, and that's F1, F1, F1 in the background color. And with app.js, let's just log something to the developer console. Console log, hello from app.js. And of course, we need to add our semicolon at the end. Um, okay, so that's our app.js file. We've got a CSS and we've got an image. So how do we use these in our HTML? Well, typically you would, you know, to import a style sheet, for example, to import some CSS, you go ahead and put a link tag with the uh, rel attribute of style sheet. And another nice thing with Visual Studio Code, you can just put link, hit tab, and it's gonna kind of work out what you wanna do. And the most commonly used one is the style sheet. So that's our link tag for our style sheet. Now, how do we actually go ahead and import the file? Well, we use um, what's called the Ginger templating syntax. And in this case, uh, it's just two curly brackets. And inside here, we're gonna pass a function. And that's the URL for function, which is a Flask function. And in the next couple of episodes, we're gonna be exploring Ginger and the Ginger templating engine. And it's uh, Ginger is the default templating engine that Flask use. Uh, 
Flask uses and it's extremely powerful. It's awesome. I absolutely love it and you can do so much with it. So uh, hang tight for those next couple of episodes. So what do we do inside URL4? Uh, URL4 takes two arguments. So we're going to give it a directory name and then we're going to give it a file name and I'm going to provide that sort of explicitly here. And the file name we're going to give it is CSS forward slash style.css. And maybe I'm going to make uh, my terminal a little smaller and make this a bit bigger so you guys can see exactly what's going on here. So let's just recap what we've done. We've used the ginger template and syntax, which is these two curly braces. And then inside, we've written the URL4 function. And then inside the URL4, we've provided it two arguments, a static directory, and we've also explicitly given it a file name. So what's actually going to happen here is uh, when the render template function is called in our views, here we go. So we're giving it the uh, full uh, path to our file name. Uh, it's going to look at this file. And then when it sees these two curly braces, uh, Flask knows to pass this to Ginger to then execute whatever's in between these two curly braces. In our case, we've got the URL4 function uh, with the directory name static, and we're giving it a file name of CSS forward slash style.css. Now, what's actually going to happen is URL4 is going to construct a URL. You know, that, that's its function. That's what it does. And it's going to sort of patch these arguments together. And it's going to give a uh, complete file path of, you know, the name of our domain, forward slash static, forward slash CSS, style.css. So um, I'll show you that in action. If we go ahead and save that and open up our file, you can see here our background has changed to gray. Now, if we go ahead and edit, just in case you can't see it in this YouTube video, let's just go ahead and change this to something a little bit more extreme. So purple, save that file. I want you to note something here. If we go ahead and reload that, I think nothing's changed. Why the you know why is my code not working? Well, it's because the browser is doing some caching. So if you open up the developer tools and that's with Control Alt I, and then head over and just make sure in the um, I think it's the network tab, just make sure that this little checkbox here is ticked, and that's to disable the cache. You know your browser doesn't want to completely reload a style sheet every time you load a new page. So it does some clever clever things, it caches it. So now if we reload, we get a beautiful purple background. But you know, that's a bit extreme. So that's, uh, let's change that back to a nice subtle gray and then reload. And there we go. So that's just another little tip. You know, I had it at first when I was making Flask apps, I was changing my CSS, I was changing my JavaScript, reloading my file and it just wasn't working. I was getting so frustrated. So all you have to do, you know, it's just some browser caching. Just make sure that is ticked. And you probably have to leave your developer console open. So even if that's ticked and we close that, it's probably still going to do some caching. So just leave the developer console open. Just slide it to the bottom. And that is CSS. So JavaScript, what have we got? We've got a hello from app.js message that we're printing to the console. And again, you can see the console here. We don't have any messages because we need to bring in our app.js file. And we do the exact same thing that we did with um, our CSS. It's just we're importing a JavaScript file. So how do we do that? We do a script and then we need to give it a source. And we're going to do the exact same thing as we did with our CSS URL for we're going to give it the uh, static directory because like I said, we've got the structure here, static and then nested in there, we have CSS image and JavaScript. So let's give it a file name. Oh, remember to use the uh, correct quotations and ours is JS forward slash app notes. Uh, yeah, app.js. So there we go. We're doing the exact same that we did with our style sheet but we're using uh, script tags and the source attribute. URL4 static 
file name equals js.app.js. So you, once again, URL4 is going to construct a URL for us and it's going to build it as our uh, root sort of domain name forward slash static forward slash js forward slash app.js. So now we can make sure that's saved. Go ahead and reload our um, page here. And you can see we get a message down here. Hello from app.js. Now let's just add something else into our uh, JavaScript file. No, not flash alert. Woo. Let's just throw any old string in there. And then let's reload that. And there we go. We get an annoying alert. So let's go ahead and delete that. So, so that's how you import CSS and JavaScript files into your HTML. Now, what about images? Yep, you guys guessed it. We use the exact same syntax. So in the source, you would normally put, you know, a path to the file or the image that you wanted to render in the browser. So we're just going to use the ginger template and syntax with the URL4 function. We're going to give it the uh, static directory and then file name equals we're going to give it img and what do we call it flask.png let's go ahead and save and load that and whoa -ho -ho, what a whopper that's a bit of a big image so uh, let's uh, style that just a little bit mw should give you a max width and let's just put uh, 500 pixels will do for now so go ahead and save and reload and there we go we've got a nice image we've changed our background color and we've got this little uh, console log function prompt you know printing something out to the uh, developer console in chrome so very very nice indeed i hope that all makes sense and uh so now you know how to import your style sheets import javascript files and embed any images into your HTML. And just to recap, we created the static directory and that's in the uh, root of our app module. And then inside there, we've got three other nested directories. We've got CSS, we've got image and JavaScript. We created files for each of those and then we linked them. So that's exactly how to work with static files in Flask. Now, another interesting point here is if we go to static forward slash flask.png in, no, sorry, excuse me, guys. I forgot the uh, image. And you can see it here, it's a massive image, so it's showing up a little bit weird and it's got a clear background. But yeah, you can see, you can access any of your static assets directly from this URL. So if we go and put static, CSS, uh, soul.css. There we go, it's actually rendering the contents of our file. And again, we can do the same with JS. And there we go. So that is how to work with static files in Flask. So guys, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you've got any questions, drop them in the uh, comments below. And once again, I do have a um, text-based version of this tutorial link is in the description if you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe i've got lots of videos coming in the future and in the next episode we're going to be exploring more of the powerful ginger templating engine so thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next one